Here's a quick video about using visual models to write and interpret numerical expressions. Before we go too far, we need to take care of first things first. It's important that you know what each math term is related to. The sum is the final result of addition, product goes with multiplication, difference tells you subtraction, and quotient tells you division. If you don't remember these, please study them. You will need to know them. Next, you need to remember the order of operations. Most of you, if not all of you, learned about PEMDAS last year. Okay? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay? This lesson, that is extremely important. You need to know this. Okay? PEMDAS stands for parentheses. That's what you do first. Okay? Then you f go to the exponents. Then you multiply, divide, add, and subtract. It's not that we like any of these less or more than the others. It's just we need to take care of them in this order. Okay, now let's look at a couple of the problems. If we have three times the sum of 26 and 4, we need to remember that each word has a specific symbol or meaning in math. So this one's one of the more basic ones. We can start with three times. Okay, we have three, and we know we're going to multiply from times. Okay, then it says the sum of 26 and 4. Remember that sum means we're adding, so we have 26 plus 4. But remember, this is 3 times the sum, so we've already found out the value of 26 and 4. So I will be putting that inside parentheses. Okay? I'm then able to solve it. Okay? 3 times 26 plus 4 is 30. 3 times 30 is 90. Okay? Let's look at another. 6 times the difference between 60 and 51. Okay? Left to right. 6 times, times is multiply, the difference, which is subtraction, 60 minus 51. And remember, this is 6 times 60 minus 51. So that will go inside the parentheses. Okay, bring it down. 6 times 60 minus 51 is 9. 6 times 9 is 54. Okay. The sum of 2 twelves and 4 threes. Okay, let's draw this one out to help us a little bit. So we're going to have 2 twelves, 12 and 12, and four threes. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to use a model for this one. Okay, the easiest way is just put it inside a rectangle. Okay, when we look at this, we know that the sum, we're adding it together, is going to be one larger piece. Okay, two twelves and four threes. When I add this, I'm gonna, I like to do it piece by piece. So two twelves I know is 24. We can do two threes is six. Two threes is six. And remember, we're adding all these together. 24 plus six is 30. Plus six is 36. I've now broken it into multiple pieces, and I've used a model to show my work. Okay. Now, when we get into a problem like this one, it's easy to say 16 plus 9 times 4. But it's not clear what order I'm doing. So really, when I look at this problem, I want to say that we are doing the sum of 16 and 9 times 4. When I say that out loud as the sum of 16 and 9 times 4, or think it in my head, it tells me exactly where the parentheses need to be. Okay? So I know that 16 plus 9 is 25 times 4, and that is 100. Okay? Big idea from this slide, this page. So remember, sum of 16 and 9 times 4. Sum addition times 4. Okay? 
Next, we need to make sure that we look at this problem the same way. This is the product of 20 and 3 plus the product of 5 and 3. Remember, get in the habit of saying it or thinking about it this way. It will make it much easier for you. Okay? Looking at 20 times 3, we have 60, plus 5 times 3, which is 15. 60 plus 15 is 75. Okay? Now we're going to look at comparing the expressions in word and numerical form. It sounds much more complicated than it really is. If we have the expression 9 times 13 and 8 thirteenths, we can compare them. And we're going to use 13 as a factor that we want to compare because that's going to make it easier for us. So the first thing we can do is draw a picture. I'm going to start with a rectangle, and I'm going to have 9 thirteenths. So, draw it out, 1, 2, 3. So I have 9 thirteenths now. And I can draw out 8 thirteenths. Okay. Okay. So I have now modeled 9 thirteenths and 8 thirteenths. I can look at it and say, okay, 8 thirteenths has 1 less than 9 thirteenths. A lot of you can look at it and say 8 thirteens. I know that that means 8 times 13 and solve it. But if it asks you to draw a model, make sure that you're able to do that. Okay. And what we're going to do from there is we're simply going to use our symbol. 9 times 13, or 9 thirteens, is greater than 8 thirteens. Let's look at one more example. The sum of 10 and 9 doubled and the product of 2 and 10 plus the product of 2 and 9. What I would do first is take my word expression here and turn it into a mathematical expression. So I know that the sum of 10 and 9 means 10 plus 9, okay? And doubled means I'm multiplying it by 2, okay? Then I can go and solve it. 10 plus 9 is 19 times 2 gives me 38. I can come across the product of 2 and 10 is 20 plus the product of 2 and 9 is 18. 20 plus 18 is then 38. So these expressions are equivalent. They are the same as each other. Okay. Now you might be asked to draw a picture. How can we do that? It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. Okay, For the sum of 10 and 9 doubled, we're going to draw a simple rectangle. Okay, And we will have 10 and 9, because I'm adding both of those together, remember, and we're doubling it. So we're going to do 10 again and 9. Okay, Look at the right side. 2 times 10. We're going to start with a rectangle again. Okay, 10 and 10, because that's 2 times 10. Then I'll do a 9 and another 9. Looking at this, we know that there's a 10 here and there's a 10 here. There's a 9 here and a 9 here. A 10 here and a 10 here and a 9 and 9. These are equivalent. They are the same thing. And I have now compared them and can write in the middle that they are the same.